Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about making your own decals and some of the efforts that I've looked into to make them. One of the great things about decals is the way people personalized aircrafts and, and tanks. Obviously for 40k or something like that you're not dealing with a lot of aircraft but these type of things are pretty difficult to freehand especially when you have an exotic font like this Eve of Destruction uh, gun truck there. Uh, and this one is is in full color. They have the red baron on the side of there, but that's hard to, for a decal to to put over top that. There are some issues with the decals. If you put a decal on a clear transfer medium, it's it's really hard to get the pigments to cover it. So these are just some applications for different decals that you know based on real Vietnam era stuff. These are some that I put on my 15 millimeter Space Marines. Just some I found these on eBay, but now I can make my own because there's a lot of really unique sayings that are in the 40k book. My favorite is hope is the first step in the road to disappointment. So let's look at some decals that I purchased off eBay and this isn't just to disparage the seller of this. They used what looks like a white toner system to create the white and then there is another set on the side of clear that you can put over top of it. And this is a pretty good compromise. The white toner stuff you can get a cartridge for an existing laser printer for a reasonable price but this is an extremely good coverage. I, I didn't touch it very much and, and already some of the whites coming off. You can see that. And when you do put it on, it's it's not very opaque. It's pretty difficult to come up with something that's completely opaque where you can use a lighter color to cover a darker background. So these are the decals that I've been including with the cars that I was selling. And I really think that a good decal is is important, but it's difficult. There is a company in Italy that will silk screen them, but the minimum order is is huge, and I I would never go through that in a lifetime. So these are printed on white background because this car is primarily white. This is printed on a white background, so the entire page is white. And what you do is you just color in an area around the red, which would be the top of this car, and then you you trim it as close as you can and you try to match the color up as close as you can which is difficult because different paints go on different depending on the primer so this car is primarily red the entire decal sheet is printed red you cut as close as you can but you can sort of see it now this car being black it's pretty easy to match up black gloss black is gloss black so that that one turns out okay but it's a huge decal you're stretching that over the entire car so this is what I've been doing it's it's a compromise for me I actually think it is better than the ghost white toner that I showed you previously because that doesn't cover very well this is what I picked up uh, this is a UniNet iColor 500 I talked to a rep and he suggested that the 500 being a discontinued model actually has a little bit better opacity for um, underprinting applications. They have a new one called a 550. Um, this is the 500. This is also based on an Oki printer. So if you can get an Oki 7, uh, I think it's called a 711 WT, you can get the same thing. As you can see, it's got the four cartridges in here. What you do is you swap out the black cartridge for a white cartridge. And then it prints your blacks by doing a composite of the other three colors. It tells you on the side there what configuration to put it in and you you rearrange those um, cartridges based on what you're doing obviously you won't use the white toner cartridge for standard printing on white paper or on white back decal, decal paper so um, these are pretty pricey you're probably looking at thirty five thirty six hundred dollars for one this is the software that came with it it took me a little bit to get used to the software I found that it was uh, it's got a lot of settings um, and so you import your your image which I created in paint.net I try to use uh, free open source software whenever I can and paint.net will do a PNG image which allows you to put a clear background and over here you can see that you can do an overprint or an underprint and when you click up on the overprint or underprint it tells you how to configure your uh, cartridges sometimes you move the white up sometimes you leave it out and replace it with black so I set this up with the maximum settings for underprint 400% and the ink is I, I want the white to be as solid as I possibly can get it and um, the, the rep was very honest with me and told me that this this um, application is not perfect it, it's it's very very difficult to get an opaque white so this is what prints out um, you buy the blue paper and 
I did something with this particular sheet. Actually, this one didn't turn out because I made it too big. I had to resize it a little bit. But you'll see that I put some just blank white ovals. I'm going to test this out on this particular car. And this is a good car to test it on because you got three different colors that you're trying to cover with the white. And so this would be um, one of the James Hilton variations. And I'm going to put a, a piece underneath that's just a blank with no number. And what's nice about this is it's going to go right over top the white and the red. So you can see how it covers on white and red. Um, this car had just a big oval on the top. And you can see, look, on the left, the blue is, is coming through. And on the right, the red is coming through. So it looks, you know, it's not a completely opaque white. Um, so in, in large areas like this, it doesn't cover completely. I, I mean, you might think that's okay or, or not. I don't know. But I just wanted to point out this is what you can get. And this, I think this is about the best you can get for you know, a pretty hardcore hobbyist level printer. If you want to print it yourself, you're getting, you're getting a good, you know, crisp laser image. So by putting that down, um, it, it provided an extra layer of opacity. So I smoothed it down a little bit and I let it dry. And then I came back later and I'm going to put the second layer on. So this one has the number on it and, and watch it, the difference that it makes by putting two layers on there. And this decal paper is very, very thin. Uh, you know, it's, um, I actually have a couple different brands of decal paper to test, but this is the cheapest one because I, I'm wasting a lot of pages by printing poorly. So when I, when I put this on, I kind of line it up as best I can. I let the bottom one dry because if, if you try to put it on, then the bottom one's sliding and you're trying to slide the top one and the bottom one at the same time and it can create a problem. But look at the difference. It, it is much, much more opaque. It was pretty simple to do. And I, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that result. I don't think it was incredibly difficult. We're talking a large area of white over top two different colors. Um, so that's, I, I don't think that's a bad result for what you can do at home because it's, it's a challenging thing getting decals right, getting them printed. So I just very carefully lined it up and then I'm gonna let this one dry um, and I'm going to put the rest of the decals on the car, and I'm going to show you how it, how it turns out when the uh, rest of them are applied and, and how different things worked out. So here we go. It, it, it's pretty interesting to me that the smaller areas of white, you don't need to double up on because it does they don't look bad. On the back, I doubled up on the 48. On this side, it's it's doubled up and on the pop cola but the writing there where it says america's finest cola that's a single one that that coke the, the bottle of soda that's just a single one the the hood covered the black um the red is underprinted with white ink which is nice and that makes the red very bright and and the white doesn't need a second layer on top of the, the uh, hood it seems like the only time you really notice it is on a large area like the uh, the pop cola on the side there that's not doubled over and you can see the side uh, door oval is not doubled and you can see it coming through. So it, it really shines in areas like on the back there because that uh, gray is underprinted in white and it, it's, it's on a clear medium. Uh, it, it does a good job. Um, so here's the, the, I guess, the final wrap up on if you want to try to get a printer to do this, this, sort, of, uh, this sort of work. This is the uh, Uninet iColor 500. I think that it's probably the best option available. Um, there are UV printers. There are, you know, direct-to-garment printers. There's all different kind of options you can do. But if you want a good uh, laser printer, this will probably be your best option. I may suggest looking into a, a different uh, software. Maybe the, someone will come up with an aftermarket software that can that can do um, a little bit thicker uh, printing. But overall, I think it gets better results than most of the things that are out there. So this is the new thing in the makerspace. I'm going to be making uh, decals with this for all different projects. So all right, people, thanks for uh, watching and have a good day.